This first lecture will be on influenza viruses, presented by James McSharry, Professor Emeritus, Albany Medical College, Albany, New York. Influenza viruses are negative sense envelope RNA viruses that contain segmented genomes. They infect waterfowl, birds, ducks, geese, things like that. Occasionally, influenza viruses spread from waterfowl to other animals, including people, causing mild to very serious and often deadly disease. Current influenza viruses that are circulating uh, through the, the world right now are H5N2 and H5N8. Uh, this, this particular slide shows what happened in 2014, and the almost simultaneous detection of closely related viruses in Asia, Europe, and North America suggests linkage with, with bird migration via a large region in Russia. Now, back in 1997, H5N1 appeared in, in China, and that spread throughout the world. Now, those H5N1 have mutated to become the H5, H5N2 and H5NH, which are causing major problems in poultry throughout the world today. Influenza virus is, this is a model of influenza virus. On the exterior, there are two glycoproteins, the hemagglutinin, or HA, which is the blue knob, uh, is uh, a, a, this, this, the HA attaches the virus to sialic acid containing receptors on the surface of the cell. The N, NA is the norminidase. This is a, uh, a tetramer. This is the orange colored uh, glycoprotein on the outside of the virus particle. And this protein actually functions as the virus is released from the cell. Inside, uh, the first one is the matrix protein, the M M1 protein. This is one of the major proteins of the virus particle, coats the complete inside of the lipid envelope. Uh, the green proteins, or the M2 protein, is an ion channel, which is involved in uncoating the virus inside the cell. As we enter the virus particle, the interior, you see there are eight ribonucleoproteins labeled PB2, PB1, PA, HA, NP, NA, M, and NS. These ribonucleoproteins contain negative stranded RNA and multiple copies of the NA protein, the nucleocapsid protein. The influenza viruses are designated and they are typed on the basis of the antigenic properties of the nucleocapsid protein and the, mem the membrane proteins and they are type A, B, and C. A and B cause disease in people. C is a minor uh, entity in terms of human infection, but it is involved in other infections. Swine influenza viruses is type A. Influenza viruses are subtype of the antigenic properties of the HA and NA proteins. There are 16 HA and nine NAs. The swine influenza virus is type A, subtype H1N1. The avian influenza viruses come in, in two different uh, groupings in terms of their pathogenicity. The, in order for the virus to infect the cell, the HA has to be cleaved. So, if, and it's cleaved uh, a tr via a trypsin-like trypsin segment. In low pathogenic avian influenza viruses, the protease uh, level is just four amino acids. 
and and it, it's very slightly um, cleaved, or it's not it's not completely degenerate. So the cleavage occurs in the respiratory tract and in the gut only, whereas the highly pathogenic avian influenza virus is susceptible to numerous proteases. So cleavage occurs, cleavage of the HA occurs throughout the animal and uh, virus infection can occur throughout the animal and that is why it is much more deadly. Influenza virus, human influenza viruses, uh, in, influenza A viruses, like so seasonal H1N1 and H3N2 viruses. These occur every year, uh, and uh, particularly recently, we have more H1N1. This past season, uh, 19 to 2015, 2016, H3N2 was a major cause of disease. In 2009, a new influenza virus appeared and was pandemic, it was H1N1, and this virus spread throughout the world and caused very, very large numbers of infection. It wasn't quite as bad as, bad as people worried about, about thought, people thought maybe similar to the 1918 pandemic, which killed approximately 50 million people. This H1N1 probably killed a, a much, much smaller number of people. There's also an influenza B viruses. Uh, those are the humans. Now the avian influenza viruses, H5N1, H5N2, H5N8, H7N7, and H9N2, occasionally spread from birds to people. Human infection with these avian influenza viruses occurs rarely, but can be deadly when it does occur. All avian influenza A viruses have the potential cause influenza pandemics. Now, a pandemic is a worldwide epidemic. This is the replication cycle for influenza viruses. The first step is attachment. The virus attaches to sialic acid containing glycoproteins and glycolipids on the plasma membrane of a susceptible cell. Next step is for the virus to get taken into the cytoplasm through Platherin coated pits. This is um, in the pit, the pH of the medium in, inside the, the endosome is reduced to about six, under which circumstances the, hemoglo the hemagglutinin undergoes a conformational change, which allows the viral envelope to fuse with the endosomal membrane, releasing the ribonucleoproteins. So for each of the eight ribonucleoproteins in the virus, they will get released into the cytoplasm. Now these proteins have nuclear localization signals on them, so they are transported to the nucleus, where two kinds of transcription occur. Uh, one is to pre make messenger RNAs, and this is a rather interesting way to make messenger RNAs. The um, cap, the five prime cap of cellular newly made messenger RNA is cleaved off, and that's used as a primer to make messenger RNAs for each of the eight or 10 proteins of the virus. And those are all made in, in, the, in the nucleus. In addition, the ribonucleoprotein is copied into a, a positive sense and then back into a negative sense, which is used to make progeny viruses. These viruses... Um, accumulate and are released into the cytoplasm, the messenger RNAs for the HA and the norminidase uh, associate with ribosomes and rough in the plasma reticulum where they become glycosylated and exported to the plasma membrane. Uh, the 
other messenger RNAs are made into proteins, and those proteins go back into the nucleus to form new nucleocapsids. And in this way, uh, the virus replicates itself, and, and uh, many, many, many viruses are made. Now, the, there are a number of antivirals that are used for, to, to treat patients uh, who are infected with influenza. Originally, they were ion channel blockers. Remember, if you go back to the um, model for the virus, and there were those green ion channels. Amantadine and romantadine are very similar compounds, and they block that ion channel. I'll show you a picture shortly. And they are only good for type A influenza virus. And currently, they are not recommended because they generate resistant viruses very quickly. In addition to the ion channel blockers, there are norimididase inhibitors. These have come about in the last couple of years. One is oseltamivir carboxylate, also known as Tamiflu. It's good for both type A and type B viruses. And zananivir or Valenza, also good for type A and type B. These two... In uh, inhibitors uh, block the ability of influenza viruses to re remove uh, the sialic acid from the, um, the virus, and hence the virus tends to stay inside the cell and doesn't get released. Now, for the amantadine, as I said, this blocks the ion channel, so the amantadine just sticks into the channel and blocks it and prevents the ions from flowing and hence the pH doesn't change in the endosome and the virus doesn't under, under, uncoat. For the norminidase inhibitors, they block the ability of the norminidase to cleave off the terminal sialic acid on these type of proteins. And that, uh, again, prevents the release of the, of the virus from the cell. In addition to those licensed antiviral drugs, there are a number of experimental compounds for the treatment of influenza. One is called DAS-181. DAS this compound removes sialic acid from the surfaces of glycoproteins and glycolipids of the cells of the upper respiratory tract just enough to control the infection, but not so much to cause harm. Another newly developed antiviral is T705. This inhibits the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. There are several novel compounds under investigation for the inhibition of influenza virus. So this is a very active area of research. And another active area of research is combination chemotherapy where more than one drug is used at the same time. Uh, you try one of the amantadines plus norminidase inhibitors, something like that, and, and that's an active field for research. Current influenza vaccines. So not only do we have antivirals, we also have vaccines. The current influenza vaccines are an inactivated vaccine containing type A, seasonal and pandemic H1N1 viruses, and type A seasonal H3N2 virus, and type B influenza virus. So, so this has three or four different viruses that are inactivated and then put into a solution which is injected intramuscularly. We also have what's called a cold adapted live attenuated influenza virus vaccine, which contains the same four strains of virus as the inactivated vaccine, and it's delivered intranasally, so there are no, no needles. It's kid-friendly, but it is kind of expensive. This is a slide of somebody giving the live attenuated vaccine to, to a patient. The current flu vaccines uh, Type A and Type B viruses are designed to induce antibodies to the type-specific HA hemagglutinin antigen, a blood
like attachment virus to the cell, preventing infection when they work. Apparently, on a good day, you get about 80% protection most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. The current 2015 vaccine is only 20 to 30 percent effective, as an example. Now, the way the vaccines are made, is, uh, this is fairly new. This is a 2004 paper from Dr. Peter Palazzi. And what they did in, in, in the past, I think the first influenza vaccines were developed in the 1940s. And they just grew the virus in eggs and activated it and all the vaccine. But you had all kinds of problems with that. With the ability to use recombinant technology, uh, what they've done now is to make plasmids of each of the eight genes for the virus, the HA and the NA, and the PV1, PV2, PA, NP, M, and NS. And those are all, those plasmids are put into uh, a cell to make a new virus, which is a, a combination. Now, the backbone, the only the HA and the NA are specific for the current vaccine. The backbone comes from a Puerto Rico uh, which is well tolerated in people. And once they started using this vaccine, all of the problems that we've had with vaccines in the past, or most of the problems have gone away. Problems with current influenza vaccines. For type A viruses, random mutations in the HA gene lead to different HA antigens each year. Therefore, need a new vaccine each year. It's very expensive to make and also is kind of hit or miss when you get it correct. As we said, in 2015, uh, the vaccine didn't match very well, about 30% effective. And a few years ago, they had a vaccine that didn't work at all. So, so that's a problem. Type B viruses do not change much from year to year, so that's not a problem. Now, they have found that there are broadly uh, reacting antibodies in people. So they have figured out ways to make vaccines from that. And, and on this slide, you, this is a slide of the HA. It's a trimer. And the, the red is, is the globular head. This is where individual mutations occur every time the virus replicates, basically. And this is why you have to make a new vaccine each year, because those antibodies are directed against the head of the virus. Now, recently, it's been discovered that broadly reacting antibodies are also generated in people over time, and they're directed toward the stem re region of the hemagglutin. And uh, a number of these broadly acting antibodies have been analyzed and, and they are uh, now being studied and to be used as, as a vaccine which will work against all of the influenza viruses, all of the, the type A influenza viruses. 